Labour closely knitted figures have the apprehension that Starmer's previous job roles and responsibilities could come back to disturb the flow of BIS political career him as Conservative Party strategized to bump up confrontations and attacks. Keir Starmer's tenure as Chief of Public Tribunals and Trials with Effective Prosecutions is coming under the optical lenses with intense scrutiny. This could have a negative effect on his winning for the Labour Party as is coming back to destabilise their prospects. Labour attaches have communicated anxiety about Tory tactics to upgrade insinuation attacks with little, more or no evidence on Sir Keir Starmer's duration as leader of civic trials, Sky News can reveal. The Labour leader has constantly referenced his time heading the Crown Prosecution Service between 2008 and 2013 as a fundamental slice of his political pitch to electorates. At PMQs earlier this month, he bragged. I have prosecuted thousands upon thousands of sex offenders. The Prime Minister has just shown that he does not understand how the criminal justice system works. No wonder he cannot fix it. But some Labour Party insiders have misgivings about this style, with one telling Sky News. If your record involves as many controversies as Keir Starmer, it's probably not great political strategy to draw attention to it. Staff member in the attack office at Conservative Campaign Headquarters, CCHQ, have been scrutinising thoroughly through cases for over a year. High-ranking Tory informants say they think Sir Keir's historical events is a weakness they can manipulate and feast on, having recognised numerous instances they reflect will alter the public's perception of the Labour trailblazer. Red Knight, the unlawful autobiography of Sir Keir by Tory researcher Lord Ashcroft, has surfaced as what some in CCHQ see as a confrontation and attack Bible, narrating debatable cases, comprising of the prosecution of reporters for telephone hacking. A high-grade conservative politician spokesperson clarifies I quote, there's a lot of material out there. One of the areas where Starmer is really open to criticism is this constant claiming that he personally prosecuted this person or that person, and then when something went wrong and someone wasn't prosecuted, or the case was messed up, he says, it's nothing to do with me. You can't have it both ways, the person at the top of the organization is responsible and is the one who will have to issue a public apology when things go wrong. Sky News can disclose that one particular case that the Tories will cling on to attack Keir Starmer in the pending calendar month is the famous, Twitter joke trial of 2010. The contentious case smashes the headlines when Paul Chambers from South Yorkshire was pronounced guilty at Doncaster Magistrates Court for spreading online a threatening tweet about wanting to blow Robin Hood Airport and I quote, sky high, due to closure as a result of heavy snowfall. Mr Chambers alleged he did not reflect on his silly joke which he sent in January 2010 would be truly assumed seriously, but he was however not detained and arraigned with charges under the Communications Act for distribution of vile messages of an exceptionally aggressive, improper, offensive or threatening personality. Mr Chambers consequently appealed his case and won, with several prominent celebrity comedians involving Stephen Fry, Al Murray and Graham Linehan all throwing their support behind him. Labour spokespersons convey trepidation that the case could play into the misrepresentation the Tories have smeared on Sir Keir as, and I quote, Sir Softy, the lefty lawyer, their expectation is to expose him as out of touch and too constitutionally correct. I don't want these strikes to go ahead. I don't think anybody does. I don't think the nurses do. But I do think the government has made a complete mess of the negotiations. But the question is, should nurses be striking without exemptions for emergency care? But I don't want to see the strikes go ahead. So they're wrong to do that, is that I, what you're saying? I don't want to see the strikes go ahead, but the way to but, avoid but, strikes... But the exemptions, that's what I'm asking about specifically. The way to avoid strikes is to get in the room with the nurses and to resolve these issues. Now, if you remember, before Christmas, the RCN said to the government, if you get into the room with us and negotiate about pay, we won't go on strike at all. But they have been the in the room. No, no, they, no, they, no, they've got an offer that they put to the members. The government then sat it out for week after week after week, and they caused a situation now where we're in a real mess. And the government needs to learn that lesson, get in the room, negotiate this, compromise and get on with it. And, you know, nobody, but nobody wants to see strikes okay. in nursing, in hospitals, in railway or anywhere else. I can quite understand... Uh, the pressure's bearing down on nurses and doctors and those who work on the railways because wages have been stagnant for over a decade, living standards haven't gone up and bills have gone up everywhere because there's an underlying structural problem here 
which is that we haven't grown the economy. The economy has had no effective growth for 13 years. That is a